Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to look at the latest version of the ES290 biradial horn. And for this video, I'm going to show you some test results using the BMS 4591 compression driver. And so the design has changed a little bit with the latest version. <clears throat> And I'm just going to go through that right now. Um, actually, the best way to show that would be to go to my SolidWorks screen. And you can see here the design. Now, the biggest uh, visual change would be the addition of these 10 degree draft angles that are on the outside of the horn shape. And so that actually has been done to help in the machining of the horn. And so I'll ha I have a picture uh, that I posted on my Instagram that shows the horn. Um, you can see the entire bottom half of the horn, bottom and top half are fully uh, CNC machined as one solid block of material. And so these uh, draft angles are to facilitate that. So the reason they need to be there is so that when the machine, the CNC ball nose cutter comes down, um, it has to go down 10 centimeters down and it has to clear the call it on the CNC so um, it's just clearance issues that we're trying to accommodate for uh, to be able to get the depth down uh, to be able to get the cutter down to the required depths of the horn um, <clears throat> so this entire piece that you see here is machined as one block of stock material uh, once this side is machined then the uh, part is flipped in the CNC and then uh, the this side is machined and then the parts finished and so uh, that allows great quality control and that we're not trying to glue pieces together post machining and so it just ensures that the uh, horn is uh, good quality so you can see the end result here um, fully machined uh, results in a very clean uh, void free uh, there's no seams in the design anymore and so the only seam is the uh, split line between the top and the bottom half and so what I did there is um, I actually the, the, the program includes a one millimeter radius all the way around and so you, know, you can see it here in my CAD model and so that just makes it so that um, you don't really need to have the two horns perfectly lined up and to form like an invisible seam, um, the, the one millimeter radius is actually a feature uh, of the horn. And uh, so yeah, so um, you'll see too that I've added a uh, bump, you can see it there, top and bottom inside the throat. So this feature actually helps with some of the uh, resonances that could potentially be set up as a basically it would be a standing wave that would be uh, potentially created up and down in the vertical and so this bump simply just diffracts the sound uh, and prevents that from from occurring so little tweaks here and there to help uh, improve the overall sound quality um, these extensions out the back are to support the high frequency driver and so uh, recently I finished a system uh, that used a pure ribbon tweeter. Um, you can see here actually this is just during the crossover uh, development for a recent project that was sent out. Um, it's using a, a horn loaded pure ribbon tweeter which I'll feature in a future video. But essentially this is a, a system where you have the mid bass, subwoofers, mid range and tweeters. And uh, I actually did show that um, let me just see here. I, I, sh I, I had shown this in another Instagram post, the, the various uh, part numbers of the system. You have 1669 for the mid bass, which covers 110 hertz up to uh, around 400, and then the mid range horn, which covers from 400 up to around 6 or 7 kilohertz. Uh, subwoofers, now there's always uh, various options available for the subwoofers, whether it be open baffle, rye pole, subwoofer, or in this case it's the uh, base reflex 12 inch using the Dayton Audio reference subwoofers. And so um, yeah, just uh, it gives you an idea of what a complete system would look like when you're using the ES290 by radio. 
So the the mid bass horn positions the biradial at the proper listening height, and also it uh, creates a very coherent sound by uh, virtue of the driver spacing being quite close together. Um, I think it's often overlooked that the drivers need to be integrated, um, and so that when you're listening to the sound that there's no perception that the high frequencies are coming from this location and the mid-range coming from this location. You want a wall of sound and you don't want to be distracted by, you know, being able to perceive where everything's coming from. Um, and that's why um, you go with the biradial and so that you get the center to center uh, distances down to a point where the sound character is completely coherent. And if it's done correctly, then it can offer the same level of coherence offered by, for example, a full range driver, a full range single driver. Um, let me skip right to the uh, blog post that I did where I posted the measurements using the BMS 4591. Now, the BMS is a German made large format ring radiator style compression driver. And so its bandwidth is extends down to 300 hertz. It uses a two inch throat and the, the diaphragm is polyester. And so you can see here that I've shown from, I pulled this image from the web, polyester diaphragm, 90 millimeter diameter voice coil. And then you can see below there uh, that the, the veins actually require that the sound makes a 180 degree out the exit of the driver. And so, um, doesn't seem to have any detrimental effect with the, the turn of the sound waves. Um, I'm assuming if it's done correctly that it's not an issue. Um, this is me showing the uh, bump that I've added as a feature. Um, so just skipping right to the measurements on the BMS, you can see here uh, that it is giving quite a wide uh, coverage and starting at uh, around 350 hertz we're getting extension up to 7 kilohertz where it falls off sharply so we're getting um, coverage from a single horn for the entire vocal range and so that's uh, definitely a desirable goal with a system that you have a point source for at least the uh, vocal range and so uh, you do see a, a, a subtle rising response. And so I, when I did the passive crossover on this, I did do a, a contour network to flatten this rising response, but I didn't use any filters to filter out the highs. What I found was that the sound quality, even into this region here was excellent. It had the same level of clarity as it did in the lower part of the mid range. And so that that's, uh, really good in terms of trying to integrate with your super tweeter whether it be a ribbon tweeter or uh, in my case um, I was using uh, the Fostex T96A which is rated at uh, 8 kilohertz and up and so I was able to successfully integrate that small super tweeter with the BMS 4591 and uh, there was no uh, dip in their frequency response they uh, blended seamlessly so uh, really good solution there and the Fostex definitely matched the dynamics and transient detail of the of the mid driver um, looking at off axis um, you can see that the latest version of the biradial offers excellent off axis that's uh, controlled and free of any anomalies and it's a wide uh, coverage as well uh, getting about um, 100 degrees uh, coverage at around 2 kilohertz and so um, subjectively I found that this compression driver just really projected the, the vocals into the room with immense authority so uh, especially with male vocals it just was um, something that you don't experience very much I've, I've you know uh, with large electrostats and large format horns I've only really experienced that sense of uh, overall presence and scale to the sound and, and um, this is no exception so uh, the BNC DCX 464 uh, is another comparable driver that offers the same kind of sound character um, now there's a uh, DCM 420 BNC DCM 420 uh, that's new that's a mid-range only version of the the DCX 464 and so 
Um, that actually is more costly than the, the BMS 4591. Uh, the DCM actually uses neodymium magnets, where the BMS is a ceramic version. Um, now, in my distortion testing, uh, the BMS offers ultra-low distortion that's world-class, so uh, no concerns there with intermodulation distortion, even into the upper treble. Uh, so great, a great overall compression driver that I would definitely consider to be on par with other uh, manufacturers, such as BNC. So, uh, yeah. Um, so the latest version of the biradial has a, a little bit uh, different aesthetic. It's got a more edgy design, I think, that ties better in with my other product offerings, going for a little bit more of an aggressive look, less uh, soft looking, um, trying to uh, give it more of an edgy look um, without compromising the uh, acoustics of the, of the horn. So um, there, there you have it. <laughs> uh, have a great day. Take care.